Good afternoon ladies and gents, uh, we're here at the South Devon Railway at Totnes Riverside Station just looking at the uh, north end of the station at the moment from the signal box Good afternoon, so we're here at Totnes Riverside just see the uh, see Hampstead Bridge there in the distance. I'm stood on the steps of Ashburton Junction signal box. And just see the uh, the rare breeds farm over there. We'll be seeing a bit more of that in a moment. So we'll uh, we'll go into the signal box now. And Alan is uh, waiting here, very relaxed. Nice Sunday afternoon doze. I think we've just woken him up from in the nice comfortable armchair. Hello, Alan. Hello, good afternoon and welcome everybody to the South End Railway. And despite the jokes, no, I'm not asleep, but I am using one of the essential pieces of equipment in any, any well-to-do signal box, and that, of course, is the upholstered armchair. Somewhat worn, but that's part of the tradition of, of the railways and the mechanical signal boxes. So, a little bit about uh, where we are. As uh, is already said, we're at uh, Totnes Riverside. This is Ashburton Junction signal box. And if you look out through the window behind me, on the left hand side you can see the connection with the main line which we mentioned the last time we were here at Totnes. We didn't actually come down to this end of the station before so you're now seeing it and you can see on the, on the left hand side as I say the connection with the main line. There used to be a gate across that which was rescued from uh, the signalling on the Barks and Hants line, Great Western route up to Paddington from a crossing at Ufton not far from Newbury. That's had to be taken away because of the difficulties of, of the interlocking that would be required with the signalling. And one of the reasons is because now there is a, a, already a crossing controlled from the signal box. You can see the wheel here, and that wheel operates the gates that you can see through the window across the foot crossing. And that is, in fact, the main access to the Totnes Rare Breeze Farm, the main pedestrian access to the, the Rare Breeze Farm. The only way to get there is actually to come on one of our trains or to come across our station which of course at the moment is actually the only way to do it because at the moment we're not running trains yet. We hope we might get some running in this year, but we still are keeping an open mind on whether we will be able to or not. A lot depends on how it goes with all the restrictions and everything else. But we're actively working towards doing, running a, what we'd like to think would be a normal service next year. We'll have to see how things go. In the meantime, thank you once again to everybody for all the donations that are come, coming in. They really are appreciated, and if nothing else, they are what's going to keep us afloat until we can get through to next year, if it has to be that. So please do keep contributing. Can I just say while we're on, we had yesterday, was the first volunteer group came back to work. It was actually the group here at Totnes Station. Uh, we are trying to get groups back in, in. We have been in touch with several of them. Those of you that are volunteers that work for any of the groups, if you haven't heard, hopefully you will do. We do have to take things one stage at a time because to comply with all the regulations we need to do risk assessments and there are various other things that have to be put in place like all the sanit hand sanitizers and so on and so forth. So you will be contacted in due course with everything explained and hopefully each group can come back. In the meantime, please don't come back unless you've actually spoken to your head of department and unless there has been permission to do so because the risk assessments must be there first. That's enough on that. We're now going to head towards the Rare Bree Breeze Farm. It is quite windy out there, so we won't be saying too much as we walk across, and we'll go and meet Sam Adams, who, who runs uh, the Rare Breeze Farm. In the meantime, I'd like to say hello to Chris Sutton, Gareth Barnard, Carol Grice, Ian Yolland, and John Davis, all joining us. Welcome to you all, and I hope you're ready for a bit of a treat, something different, slightly different at least, to railways. The Rare Breeds is a very uh, close attraction linked to us. Uh, as you know, it's, it's right next door to Totnes Riverside Station. Uh, we offer joint tickets with them and they are very popular with, with families, particularly during the summer. So let's go and have a look and see exactly what the Rare Breeds is all about and why it's well worth a visit. So we'll head around and walk out across the, across the crossing.
Okay, here we are at the Rare Breeds. So I'm about to introduce you to Sam Adams, who runs the Rare Breeds farm here. Hi, Sam. How are you? Hi. <laughs> Welcome to your audience, all on Facebook. Um, yeah. We're hoping that you're going to give us a, a tour of the Rare Breeds farm, just yeah. as you would if you came along as a visitor. Okay, okay. Well, we're going to go this way to so follow our lovely one-way system that we put in place. as of pretty much all our owls. Um, he was found living up in a block of flats of somebody's pet, unfortunately, which is not ideal for a bird of prey. Uh, to get lots of these, well, they're coming back to this country. Um, they were hunted to extinction, but you do get them in this country. And they're the largest breed of owl in the world. So we've got uh, Daniel Dawson, uh, Charlie Grizzly, Neil Brand, Richard Morrison, and a Jonathan Fry. Brilliant. Um, but yeah, if anyone know anything about this bird, please do. Um, he's got a massive wings back. There's a good boy. So usually these birds in the wild, they're hunting like grouse and pheasants. Um, oh. They will take a newborn lamb, however. Um, cats and dogs are on the menu, foxes. Um, and a female, so a female bird of prey, much larger than this, and much larger than the male. And the female can take down a small deer, like a young muntjac or a young roe deer, are on the menu. So they're very, very powerful predators to these. Massive claws, massive talons, should I say. And these talons will go through 19 gauge steel to the, the uh, roof of a car. So, yeah, you don't want to mess with these guys. Yeah. Right. Hi. Oh, we've got the question. Hi from. Hi, Ryan Maynard and Mark Hallett. <laughs> if I get anybody's names wrong, I sincerely apologise because uh, it's very easy for you. Can I have some water? Right, you're going to go back for us? She has already fly. That's a good lad. Oh. There's a good boy. Ooh. Did we want to go on? Yeah, we'll have a look around the uh, the farm. Okay, good boy, Lizzie. I'll try to go over this without breaking my neck. females at the moment. We were due this year to go up to about Liverpool to go and collect a couple more red squirrels. Um, however, with of course, coronavirus, that hasn't been possible. So we still only have our two females. Um, and fingers crossed, things will change and we can get some more. They're not easy to come by, I'm sure you can imagine. Yeah. But as always, they're not on view. Um, we've got a hi to uh, Kevin Baslington, uh, Jonathan Martin, John Haslam, and a Mark Edwards. <laughs> um, right, we'll go over and see if we can find our newborn baby goats. Which are, the oldest ones are a week old today, and then we had one born by cesarean section on Wednesday, I believe. So, yeah, very noisy duck. Looks really busy under the poly tunnel, actually. <laughs> Should straighten out. 
Please. Oh, I know, Mum. Give him back. Give him back. There we go. He's got a little uh, sister in there somewhere as well. Cool. Oh, here we go. Coco. <laughs> Me, Coco. She'll be staying with us. And I hope she'll grow up uh, nice and tall like a mother. Don't eat my welly. Get off. Me? Good boy. And then we've got Phoenix next door. And she had a bit of a fun time last week when she had a very, very difficult birth. Uh, ended up having a caesarean, which was not fun for her. Yeah, here's Phoenix. Hey, yes. There you go. Oh, hello, Caroline, Louise. Love seeing the owls. Hi, as does Zena Latham. Yes, they're brilliant. I, the owls are always a favourite. Hello, Caspian. Caspian, come here. Disney. Are you going to run off? Yeah, I thought Lisa's going to run off. <laughs> but yeah, his uh, poor mum is feeling a bit sorry for herself after all that. But she's doing really, really well. Um, I will drop in here that we have a brand new fundraiser just been started and uh, we could use all the help we can get to be honest with you. We, as many, um, had to keep closed during the, the COVID-19 pandemic. We've only just reopened this weekend um, and with our season cut so badly short, our funds are not looking great right now. Um, it's not too bad while we're open, but when the winter comes, we shut. So we don't have any funds whatsoever coming in during the winter months. So it might be a bit hard. Um, Things like this do not help. <laughs> so uh, we will do everything for our animals. If they need any veterinary care, their food, bedding, etc., we'll do anything for them. It does all cost. So we have a whole new fundraiser started up. Uh, get Tottenham Square Breeze Farm, Tottenham Square Breeze through the winter. So if you uh, pop over to that on the link, um, that'd be wonderful. And anything you can spare would be gratefully received and go towards our animals. Yeah. One of these fences I will fall over. <laughs> Uh, hello, Bob Pickering from Florida. Oh my God! Hi, <laughs> and David Hall and a Jessica is coming through. A Jessica. Hi, Jessica. <laughs> right. Okay. And then we we'll better follow our one-way system. Uh, go around. Actually, no. I'm going to be a rebel. Let's not go the one-way system. Let's go the bit twice. These are Toulouse geese. <laughs> I have been asked before, oh, they're very friendly. <laughs> I have been asked before, are these geese pregnant? Um, no, they're not pregnant, they lay eggs, but uh, they do look it, they're huge. But pretty friendly. Can you say hi? <laughs> Good girl. This is chamomile, and she's an alpaca, not a llama. They're very friendly, and they don't spit as much as llamas do. So these guys are bred for their fibre. They're not like llamas, which are big, they carry packs on their backs. These guys are bred for their really incredibly soft uh, fibre, which is pretty expensive to get the quality. But they're lovely, lovely animals. <laughs> These are some of our um, most famous residents are our pygmy goats. Everyone loves our pygmies. And Barnaby and Harry. So these are our two donkeys. Uh, this is Harry and this is Barnaby. Uh, they're Mediterranean miniature donkeys. So Barney is the proper size. Uh, we get asked a lot of the time, is he a foal, is he a baby? He's not a fully grown adult. Um, and uh, Harry is, is absolutely inseparable for him. He's a bit too big for a miniature, uh, but they're absolutely inseparable, these two. Really naughty. They're <laughs> very, very mischievous donkeys. I don't look it, but they are. Uh, hello, Sydney Wilson, uh, Ricky West. Alan Bolland from Perth, Australia. I think that's the furthest we've had yet, oh, isn't it? Oh, Australia. <laughs> oh, we should have oh, yeah, to, um, yeah. in Perth, we should have got one of our owls, the Boobert, as you might know of those. But um, yeah, we've got owls from all over, including Australia. <laughs> I don't know if our pigs will say hi. Okay. Oh, no, they're not going to. <laughs> Uh, they're too lazy, they sleep a lot. So we've got mostly, all our animals are mostly around the farm based, apart from of course our owls and things like that, but we have lots of different breeds of chickens here. Uh, we do try and stick with the rarer of the breeds. Uh, Pekins, however, are not rare in any way, shape or form, but they are lovely chicks. And we've got, I don't know if you can see, but we've got a very tiny chicken there. It's only a few days old. Brilliant. All right, a whole line for chickens. 
So we've got all sorts. We've got the silky chickens. Um, these are the Sarama, and these are the smallest in the world. Thomas Smith asks, have you any chicks Any chick at the moment? Oh, yes, we do. So we've got that little chick with his mum. Um, and we've got some more chicks in the pet's corner. With great regret, because of the restrictions, we are not allowed to open our pet's corner at the moment. Um, our chicks are still there. So if you pay us a visit, however, Thomas, um, and ask about the chicks, I'm sure one of us will be very happy to bring a chick over to say hi to you. Of course, keeping the distancing. But yes, we do have chicks but we'll keep our distance. But we can bring up and say hi to you, certainly. We'll try our best. Um, okay. so if anybody else has got any um, questions about the farm, please ask. I will do my best to answer. I cannot guarantee I'll be able to answer every question, but I will do my best. Please, no curveballs. <laughs> has been open, it's been open to the public since 2002 um, and it's uh, changed quite a bit in the time, it was uh, just wasteland before and then all of this has been built since um, and uh, for these different animals but it takes a lot of work to maintain it, um, especially in the winter when we uh, we do all of our maintenance so when we're shut to the public we can really get cracking on. Um, whether we will have the funds to do that this season I do not know so uh, Hopefully our animals will not cause too much carnage during the open season um, because we may not have the funds to do the repairs in the winter which is again why we really ask you to drop by our fundraiser to get us through the winter. Uh, it's not just feeding animals and veterinary equipment. Um, we do then spruce ourselves back up, fix houses um, just to be ready for reopening as well. We are definitely going against the one-way system. <laughs> <laughs> Adam Leading wants to buy his mum an alpaca. Brilliant. Alpacas make amazing pets. We do not actually have any alpacas for sale, um, but alpacas are lovely creatures. Um, they eat an awful lot of grass, however, uh, so you'll need a lot of grazing for them. They're handy in that they have a toilet place, so they'll go to the toilet in one area in their field, but it does burn the grass, so be prepared to have a lovely dead patch of grass. Um, and they don't like to be alone. So if anyone out there is ever thinking of having an alpaca, make sure you have a bare minimum of two. They do not like to be alone. But yeah, they do make good pets, but you need a big garden. <laughs> Very big. <laughs> uh, these are our angora goats. Uh, these guys often get mistaken for sheep, but they are actually in fact goats and they come from Turkey. Whether anyone's going to come say hi. This one's called Tag, and she's extremely friendly. She loves a bit of fuss. But the other two aren't too bothered. Unless you've got food, they couldn't care less. But Tag loves the fuss. She's a very affectionate goat. Thank you. Good girl. They look very different. So these guys need shearing twice a year. So these were sheared back at the start of March, um, and they will need shearing again before it gets too cold in the winter to allow their, their hair to grow back again. And uh, a quick interesting fact, is that angora um, wool does not come from angora goats. Angora wool comes from rabbits, angora rabbits, and you get mohair from angora goats. This is where you get mohair from, is these guys. <laughs> Don't like the look of those cows. <laughs> and our three barwin sheep. This is where. Oh, Sweden, a friend says it. So, Annette. Oh, I'm going to get it wrong. Seidlitz <laughs> from Sweden. Uh, James and Askoff asked, have you any cows or sheep? We are far too small, I'm afraid, for cows. We would love cows to add a bit more difference, but we are about less than an acre in sight. We are very, very small for an attraction. We try and make up that with very hands-on. We have two breeds of sheep. We have the Balwyn sheep. So this is a Welsh breed, a rare breed. Um, we're hoping to have lambs from the next year. Uh, they're still a bit scatty. And we've just gone past some Portland sheep, which is next door as well. And they're getting really friendly, actually. So yes, we have two breeds of sheep at the farm and hoping to get lambs for them for the first time next year, fingers crossed, to help with their survival. Which is what we're all about here. We're trying to promote and conserve rare breeds of farm animals that we can. So we're doing what we can to help in a small way. <laughs> I'm going to see if we can get an, 
the uh, Guernsey goats, see if I can get them. This is Tiger Lily. Okay, we've got a Cheryl Turner asked, do you still have that huge turkey? Um, <laughs> that's an awkward question, that one actually. Yes and no. Um, so yes, we had our three gorgeous turkeys. Um, unfortunately, while we closed, um, when we had to close, uh, a lot of our birds went into safety. Uh, we didn't have anywhere for the turkeys at the time. And because we were so quiet, uh, Mr, or should I say Mrs Fox paid us a visit. Um, and we lost a fair few birds, which was absolutely awful, including our two turkey hens. I'm relieved to say that Chief, the big male, was absolutely fine and has gone back to his original home, so he is nice, nice and safe. But uh, yeah, we had a, a fox to deal with on top of everything else while we were shut. It was, a, it was an interesting time. <laughs> but our Guernsey goats clearly don't want to play today. But this is Tiger Lily. <laughs> Another one of the rare breeds that we're trying to conserve here but they're all in their house. They've had a long day. And back around to our pet's corner area, which as I mentioned earlier, sadly currently closed. Um, but when we reopen, we like to have guinea pig handling, bring the chicks up for you to say hi to. So it's what we really try and be is as hands-on as possible. But they're out enjoying the grass at the moment. Oh, brilliant. Carol Taylor and a Glenny smoker. Hi. <laughs> I'm not sure what kind of reception we're going to get from the geese. They're not very friendly. Hi, guys. Okay. <laughs> that was very mild. They're usually quite aggressive if they're defending their babies. <laughs> These babies are about a month old now and they've grown so fast from tiny little balls of fluff and it's ridiculously how quick they grow. And their parents are very, very protective. <laughs> of our pets corner. So this was all redone um, specifically for opening this season. We redid it, paint job, um, brand new pens, got new animals and got it all ready to go. And then of course we lasted about a week before we shut. So you can get a, a bit of a glimpse as to what there is to offer. Richard Dara says, you do the oh, <laughs> you do the best cream teas. Thank you, Richard. Oh, it's sad at the moment our cafe shut, hopefully reopening as soon as things settle down. But thank you so much. Yeah, the, the cream teas are epic for like, like that. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> thank you, Richard. And uh, we've got a few chickens out here. So these are the, uh, the light Sussex. They're some of my favourites, actually. They're so beautiful. And uh, I suppose I'll introduce you to Goliath as well. <laughs> this is Goliath. He's a Cochin cockerel. And uh, they're meant to be a really friendly, docile breed. And he is, except to me. He doesn't like me very much. I've still got the scars beside my knee from when he got me last time. So he doesn't like me. <laughs> okay. Right, well, head off. Hold on a sec. Oh, <laughs> what well, a good question to end on. Did the, um, the police catch the burglars? So, some of you may not be aware, um, with great sadness, we did have two break ins um, while we were closed. So, the first was at Easter, when we put up a photo of a beautiful, newly hatched little chick on our Facebook page to celebrate Easter. Um, that chick wasn't even 24 hours old, and overnight, someone broke in and took it out of the incubator, um, which was terrible. Uh, never managed to get good enough CCTV to catch them. So we installed our own CCTV system, much better. And then out of the blue, uh, the start of this month, um, last month, sorry, uh, somebody came back and took another chick. Um, the police have been on it. They have spoken to the suspects. Um, as it was, they have got nowhere. It was absolutely denied. So in answer to that question, 
there's no leads and case closed, um, so we won't be getting that chick back, which is very, very sad for everyone involved. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and very importantly, if you've been to visit us, wash your hands <laughs> at the wash station. Very important. All right, we're going to head out somewhere. But a bit try and find somewhere out of the wind. <laughs> I'm gonna be a rebel again. Okay, well thank you Sam, that was really interesting going around the, the Rare Breeds Farm. Now you, you opened yesterday for the first time, yeah. how's, how's trade been since you've been opened? It's been really good actually, you weren't sure how, how it would go, uh, we didn't know if we were going to be dead quiet and nobody, or if we were going to have a queue out the door. Fortunately it was neither of those, it's been lovely and steady, we've had some amazing people visit us, they've been so generous and really supportive. So it has been a, a wonderful first weekend, really happy, couldn't have gone better. Oh, that's so, good. Okay. <laughs> so you're now hoping to stay open for the rest of the season, is that correct? Cool? be right? Yeah, definitely. So um, our usual season is up until the end of October at the half term and then, then we shut. Um, we'll just see what happens. If we can stay longer, we, we will if we're allowed and if we can. Um, however, if the weather turns at the end of October and we turn into a bog, a bog we will have to close at normal time. Um, but yes, we will. Fingers crossed, if it all stays the same, we'll be open now throughout the rest of the season, in theory. And what are you charging for family tickets? Yep. So for a family, it's a £27 for a family ticket. Uh, adults is £8.50. We've got senior citizen discount of £7.50. Children is £7. And if your little one is under three, then they're free of charge. We also do offer season tickets and childminder tickets as well. And on a Wednesday morning, we do a parent and toddler. So the parent gets it half price with their living. Okay. And just to remind everybody, of course, at the moment, mm. the only way people can get to you is, is to come across the Mainline main main station through our station to get to you. Yeah, we're really grateful for you guys. Thank you so much for allowing us access. So, yes, when you come on over, um, the steam trains for now aren't running, but I'm sure you guys will get them running again very soon. So just please be respectful as you come on along the steam railway platform and then you come on in. Um, so the toilets are open, but please um, be uh, careful. Wash your hands and keep them clean. In fact, it's exactly the same advice that everybody's been given. Is it, in that sense. But so far, everybody's been good and you haven't had any problems. Not that we're aware of, no. We're keeping eye. We've got the whole CCTV up, so we're, we're keeping an eye on how things are going for you guys over there. Thank so. you. <laughs> Just to, just to emphasise that we do, when we are running, usually, we do offer joint tickets with mm. the Rare Breeds, and that is a very good way of getting here because we have free parking at Buttressley, so you get the combination of a train ride plus the Rare Breed Farm. So there's something for everybody, particularly if you've got a railway enthusiast in the family, bring them here, because just on the other side of this building is, in fact, the main line. I pointed out earlier there was a, we have a connection to the main line here, which is used for, for various transfer moves and that sort of thing but the main line itself is just on the other side of the farm here. In fact, am I not right in thinking, Sam, that you've got part, you took over part of the, the old railway embankment here that uh, you've turned it to sort of some sort of nature reserve, is that right? Yeah, so we've got what we call, we term as the gully. So there's um, a, a bit, there is a gully that runs between the main line here and there's a dip, there's a bit of wetlands um, with a stream running through it. So we try and maintain that. The main line, actually. <laughs> So we do try and maintain that as a wildlife, sort of a wetland habitat for, um, for down there. So it's lovely and peaceful. We get all sorts of birds in there. The fox uses it as a highway, which is great. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a lovely little spot down there. And you can take a walk down um, beside it and see what you can spot. Thank you. OK, well, that's, that's pretty good. Um, I think we're, we're just about to sort of wrap up. So a couple of things just to finish off with. Um, first of all, don't forget, we have our shop at Buckclass Lee is now open. Tuesday, Thursday and a Saturday. Tuesday is 10 till 4, Thursday 10 till 4, Saturday 10 till 1. So you can pop in and pick up stuff from the shop or you can ring ahead on those days and then come and collect. Alternatively, we do have the eBay shop. Uh, Dave Peters, one of our volunteers, is doing a fantastic job in running that and it's doing really well. I think you might have to be getting quick with some of the items. There's quite a few things are selling out quite, quite fast as it happens. 
Um, so I think one of the things I must do, just wrapping up, is to say, don't forget, we both have appeals running at the moment. And I, I, as it's really, this is Sam's show, so I'm going to plug her appeal rather more than ours, but they both do exist. So if you have got any spare cash and fill that you can contribute, believe me, it is very valuable. Just as Sam said, I think all tourist attractions are suffering from the same problem, that we've got to get through what amounts to three winters. Uh, Sam's doing pretty well at the moment with, with people coming in, but I'm afraid I can guarantee it won't be quite enough unless she gets a bit of a top up to get her through to, to next March. Same as ourselves. So don't forget all that, and hopefully all the volunteers will start to come back one at a time, slowly but surely, and we will be getting back to, to running just as soon as it's safe to do so. So hopefully see you all again next week.